It's not the only reason. No. Yes. Is that a bad reason? I'll say, it's not the only... I'll say, no. He gave a small sigh, but it held a great deal of affection. I should have known you'd do this one of these days. It's only fair. You let out a breath, feeling relieved. So I, I seriously have never done this before. Well, this is pretty cool that this is when I decided to do it. You let out a breath. Unlike me, just like me never making cinnamon rolls for this poor boy. You let out a breath, feeling relieved that he didn't seem bothered by it. In fact, it felt kind of good. You thought maybe this enthusiasm was why Cove did it so often. He pushed himself up fully, swinging his legs over the side of the bed and leaving a spot free beside him. His hands shook where he had, left, had held them in his lap. He was nervous. You can stay as long as you want. Really? Yeah, really. I'll go, home. I'll go home soon. I don't have to stay. How long do you want me to stay? How long do you want me to stay? Well... Well, to be honest, there aren't a lot of situations where leaving you is ever what I want. I guess only when I annoy you and you need space. He chuckled softly, doubting that would happen anytime soon. Okay, I won't go anywhere. His face lit up as he settled in even more. I've secretly slept over in your room before. It's fair you get to do it too. Oh, really? You snickered, feeling pleased with your decision to do this. Well, it's like you might be getting the floor yet again. Okay, there's no way I'm letting you take the floor this time. Here we go again. You rolled your eyes and let out a soft laugh, which Cove returned as he rubbed at the back of his neck. No, seriously, you can have the bed. We should just share the bed. I'll take the floor and s I'll take the floor, I insist. I wouldn't mind if you took the bed. I appreciate you taking the floor. I appreciate you taking the floor, Cove. I'm gonna say... Um... No, seriously, you can have the bed. His eyes narrowed to slits of the queer, Abaco Marine. I'm tempted to say, let's share a bed together, but... I'm gonna be cautious. I'm gonna let Cove suggest that, not me. His eyes narrowed to slits of a quark. At least for right now. At least for right now. His eyes narrowed to slits of aquamarine. He didn't want to argue about it, but also didn't want to accept your offer. But you were firm about your decision. Your eye, your gazes stayed locked on each other until you had silently entered into some sort of staring competition, neither one of you willing to budge. As the mini battle of wills continued, you drifted closer until you could almost count every single one of his individual eyelashes. You stared each other down, the two of you locked eye to eye. One of you would have to be the first to crack. <sighs> you know I'd be more comfortable on the floor than the bed. Too bad. It's your house, so I'm not taking your bed. He pouted and pulled at the hem of his shirt unhappily. Come on. Come on, I just can't be sleeping in a bed if you're not too. So that's it. I'm not going to be the only one with a bed tonight. You raised an eyebrow and folded your arms over your chest, giving him a questioning look. Does that mean you'd share it with me? I, uh... uh, uh I mean... Yeah, I, I guess I would. Holding back your amusement, you try not to grin at his sudden uneasiness. Okay! <laughs> I'd be like, okay! He obviously hadn't thought it through completely. Eventually, your smile broke through. Though Cove stayed completely serious, his face set like stone. There, I made a comp I made a compromise. If you won't take it, then you'll just have to accept me sleeping on the floor. Okay, I'll take the bed. We'll both have the bed. We'll both have the floor. We'll both have the bed. He swallowed, and despite his resolve shaking, it didn't break. Um. We're... We're gonna share the bed. You could hear the tremble in Cove's voice as he held his hands together to keep from them from shaking. Actually, maybe not. Your eyebrows rose at how quickly he changed his mind, but when you saw how he was serious, you let out a sigh. I'm sorry. I'll do it. I can't. I can do it. I want to do it. I just need a second. It's not that serious. You felt nervous about yourself. You were glad he was making an effort. You stayed calm. I'm, I'm gonna say, um, you stayed calm. You simply waited for him to be ready to ready himself and gather his nerves. It only took a couple of moments longer before he turned to you, attempting a weak smile. Ready? Yeah, let's get in there. He took another deep breath and you slipped under the covers, making room for him to get in after you. Laying as straight as a steel rod, Cope tensed up beside you. So still, he was barely breathing at all. You rested on your side and faced him, your eyebrows pinched in the middle as you watched him. He looked back at you deeply. I... Vaughn... All of a sudden, he started trembling and shaking more than ever, and then he scrambled out of the bed. You bolted upright, leaning back on your hands as you stared at him in shock. Are you alright? Yeah, I'll... I'll be back. I just need some more time. He ran a hand through his hair in exasperation and paced around the room, breathing heavily. You were worried for him, but completely at a loss for what to do, as though he could read your mind, he spoke again. Don't worry about it's it. It's fine. Don't worry. He assured you between heavy, gasping breaths, but you were having trouble believing him. When he bent over with his hands on his knees, like he had just run a marathon, you were even more concerned. 
This isn't a problem, just a process. <laughs> just a process. He held up a hand to reassure you, and with nothing left to do, you sank back down into the bed and let him have the space he obviously needed. Okay, take all the time you need. And it did take some time for him to finish working out his nervous energy and steady his breathing to an even rhythm, but eventually, he collected himself enough to relax. You tentatively glanced over at him, watching as he let out one last deep sigh before turning back to you. Um, can I come back still? Of course. You smiled reassuringly and shuffled over to make space for him. He immediately perked up as he slipped back into the bed beside you, though was still careful not to get too close. Thank you for waiting, again, as always. He laughed shyly, his soft eyes meeting yours through the dim light. Are you okay? Yes, I am now that you are. I'll always wait for you, Cove. It took you long enough, and now it's fine. I'll always wait for you, Cove. He squeezed your arm a little tighter, his lips curving to a smile as he looked at you in awe. He shuffled closer, an inch at a time, before nuzzling into your neck and wrapping his arms around your side. You let him hold you. You stayed like that. You grasped his shirt. You wrapped your arms around him. Your fingers gently brushed up and down his back as you held him close. The room grew quiet, quiet around you. The only sounds to be heard were the faraway crash of the ocean waves and your breath mingling in the small space between you. Cove's heart was pounding, the thump of it rumbling through as, as he spoke again softly. That's... You know, I'm not scared of you, right? It's just so many other things that scare me. I'm afraid of what-if hypotheticals that aren't actually real, but I think about anyway, and of nebulous concepts of what things mean that I can barely explain even to myself. I'm scared of my own feelings and how much I feel them. And I'm afraid, because tomorrow things will be different between us, but I'll be alone again. He held onto you tighter, his breath stuttering ever so slightly. It's normal right now to see you during the day and part ways at night, <laughs> except for special exceptions. A little laugh escaped him before his tone became serious once more. It's easier to stay where I am than it is to make myself move, to not take a risk, and to not know what I might be missing, but... He hesitated and you reached up to brush a few strands of hair from his face gently, his eyes slowly fixing on yours. When did doing the easy things get so hard? When did doing the easy thing get so hard? When it comes to you, I don't know how to stay still. I want to keep taking steps forward. Honestly, when I see your face or even imagine it, I want to start sprinting. But when I try, I hit a wall. It's just like I physically can't do it on one side of my mind. There's something blocking me. This is a really cool explanation of... I love how he's explaining this to me because I've... I don't really feel that way, but he does. And it, it's a little bit, I think it's because of his introverted side. So it's really cool to get some insight in explaining things that many of you viewers probably can relate to and I can't directly because I don't feel that way. But you, maybe many of you do, so this is really cool. And then on the other side, I absolutely can't stop myself from doing it. It never ends well. I'm always like I this. I hate it. It's, God, it's the most frustrating thing. Why do I do it every time? I'm annoyed with the way I am, so I have no idea how you stand it. I'm sorry I act so split when it comes to um, romantic things. I do not want you to think I, you're rushing me when I think I'm when you when I know I'm giving mixed signals. Got it. Now I understand a little bit better. And I don't want to miss out on being happy by being like this, but sometimes I still can't help it. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm glad you've never given up on me. It means a lot. It means everything to me. I mean, there's no... Cove, there's no other choice at the moment. There's no other people I could romance. <laughs> I'm I'm being mean. No, I'm, I'm being mean. <laughs> You're welcome, Cove. You don't have to give up. You don't give up on me either. You've been on... You've been there whenever I really needed it. It's who you are, and I accept you. You smile in understanding. I say, you don't give up on me either. His eyes glossed over a little as he squeezed you closer to him and smiled. His heart rate finally relaxed to a normal rhythm. Good night. Good night, Vaughn. Good night. He leaned forward and kissed you tenderly, his hand gently moving to cradle the back of your head. I did not want anything else to happen in this bed. Yeah, I didn't feel like that was the right thing to do. So even if the game gave me that choice, I would not have in the end done it. So just cuddling or sleeping in the same bed, that's a I big step. You. That is a huge step already. I love you. I love you too. You were still smiling as you snuggled into him, getting as close as you could. 
Cocooned in his warm, fusely grew comfortable next to him, feeling him eased into you as well. Before long, your eyes were glowing heavy, growing heavy, and you drifted off in a restful sleep side by side. The next morning, you woke slowly from a comfortable dream. With a small stretch, you opened your eyes fully to the sun shining in through the window. Shuffling to your side, you noticed Cove still beside you in the bed, sleeping soundly. His arms continued to be draped around you loosely as he snoozed. You must have fallen asleep that way. You smiled, remembering the prior night. It had been so nice to spend the night together, getting to be with him in a whole different way. You could definitely get used to it. You quietly watched him sleep, you stroked his cheek gently, you ran a hand through his hair, you kissed his forehead softly. Uh, you kissed his forehead softly. Being careful not to wake him, you bent over and pressed your lips against his skin. He stirred a little in response, a small sleepy smile appearing in his face. Then a loud noise suddenly startled you and you snapped towards the source of the sound. It was a door opening abruptly, and in the frame stood Mr. Holden, smiling brightly. He hadn't seemed to have noticed you straight away. Get your butt out of bed, sport. Mom's here. Oh. All of a sudden, the two of you made eye contact, and he froze where he stood, the smile slowly slipping from his face. Uh, well, uh, that's not what I usually walk into. I clearly should have knocked this morning. Your mouth or lips fell open. Yeah, you should have knocked. Of course, Cove would get away with sneaking into my room, and I'm the one who gets caught. Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Holden. You pulled a blanket over your head. You screamed. Of course, Cove would get away with sneaking into my room, and I'm the one who gets caught. Should I pretend I didn't hear that? <laughs> Cove blinked his eyes tiredly and mumbled something incoherent before running towards the door. I just outed Cove. Whoops. Both you and Mr. Holden stared at him for a few moments, neither knowing what to say or do. Cove, who continued looking at his dad dozily, was obviously having a hard time trying to process the situation. Then his eyes widened. Dad? Cove scrambled on the bed in an attempt to get to his feet, pushing the covers back off of the both of you. Forgetting there was an overhanging ceiling above him, he shot upwards and he hit his head on the wood. Uh. Ow! He flopped back down on his pillow, pressing a hand on his head and groaning loudly. You laughed at the scene. You gaped in horror. Cove, you only shared... You only could stare in shock at all of this. Cove! You reached out towards him instinctively. Mm. Cove, but are you right over there? Mr. Holden stepped further into the room, his eyebrows furrowed in concern. He bent down towards the sun. Yes! Yes, please just go! Okay, okay, I'll leave. Cliff held his hand in front of him in a calming gesture, even though Cove could see it. He turned to make his exit, but stopped abruptly in the doorway, obviously deciding he had something more to say. I know we've talked about this before, but I feel like now is one of those times to mention that I was barely older than you when I found out I was going to be a daddy, so... Um, Mr. Holden, I don't think we're gonna have that same problem. Just saying. <sighs> Just if there's anything you need to say or ask about, I don't think one of us is gonna end up pregnant anytime soon, Mr. Holden. We're not getting kids yet. Yet, uh, um, he let out a heavy sigh, running a hand over his face before stopping himself and staying, saying calmly, You know what? It's fine. We'll chat about this later. Kyra's waiting. And I'm sure Kyra would love to hear about this. With that, he stepped back out of the room, giving the two of you one last look before pulling the door shut behind him. Cove rubbed at his face before dropping his head into his hands and mumbling between his fingers. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You patted him on the leg. Well, that was fun. You covered your face and hands. That was so awkward. You groaned. You patted him on the leg. It's alright. Things like this happen. With heavy sigh, Cove forced himself up to sit up. Cove forced himself to sit up again. He frowned hard, started staring over at the closed door. Sorry. What my dad said, that was really, really dumb. It wasn't something you should have brought up. You knew which comment Cove meant, the one about how Mr. Holden had gotten Kyra pregnant by mistake. That wasn't something that would happen with you and Cove being together. I think he was trying to show how serious spending the night is in general. He wasn't trying to compare us with him. You appreciated Cove's words. You shrugged it off. You joked about it. You felt bad about the comment. You shrugged it off. You're right. He didn't think us getting pregnant was the real serious thing that could happen. It's It was one example. We can't get pregnant, Bon. Sure, if, if I was... If I was biologically a female, sure. Which you can be in this game. But... It's kind of funny that the game doesn't recognize that we can't get pregnant! Yeah. You both simultaneously released a deep breath. I guess we can't hide in here now. He gave you a sidelong glance, and despite his displeasure at the situation, a small, a small smile squirked his lips. It's nice. It's too bad. It has been really nice. Too bad is right. I hope we'll get a chance to do this again soon. At your new apartment. You found yourself smiling along with him. 
The two of you took a few minutes to get up properly and get yourself as ready as possible before heading out to see Kyra. Kyra was waiting patiently in the living room. She was in high spirits, with her eyes set on the hallway. Her amused smile only widened when you and Ko froze. It didn't take long for the realization to sink in that the scene must have been loud enough for her to hear even from there. Cove tried to look un unimpressed, eyes narrowing over Kyra's smug delight, though his face was already turning red and his mom hadn't even said anything yet. He squared his shoulders, lifted his head, and strode forward. Hey. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby, and hello to you too, Vaughn. Her tone cracked as in her greeting, and then she just gave in, gave in and laughed, unable to keep any of it in. Ko frowned at that and his eyebrows furrowed. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. I didn't know you already had guests. His frown wobbled as he became even more embarrassed by this moment. He couldn't muster up any words to defend himself. Well, it's not like anyone's surprised by this. I'm sorry. Hi. You don't have to laugh. You didn't say anything. Well, it's not like anyone's surprised by this. Kyra laughed even harder this time. As it slowed, she brought a hand up to her cover her mouth, but you could both still see her shoulders shake. Cove still looked mortified, but he shot you a stern look. All you could do was smile. Cove was still unable to say anything, other than his... <laughs> Other than his teeth biting into a side of his cheek, he stood there frozen. Kyra studied you both for a moment. It's all right. It's okay. My not-so-little mister is spreading his wings. I can't complain about that, because, you know, he's got wings on his pajamas there. He lightly, she lightly tapped the tip of his nose. That got a tiny smile out of Cove. Despite being much taller than Kyra at this point, he still seemed like a little kid in front of her. You released the air you were holding in your lungs, and then Kyra's gaze locked onto you. You know, we were just about to go over to see Pam and Noel. Are you two coming? I'll go. He stretched his arms f for a moment and yawned, trying to physically shake off what happened. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Great. Great, let's do it then. Let's do it. It was then that you noticed Mr. Holden standing on the other side of the room. You figured he must have been trying to create some space for everyone during that last conversation. You could tell he felt a bit awkward, but he tried smiling you reassuringly as he scratched the back of his neck. His attention went to Cove. Bud, do you want to get changed first? Cove looked down at his pajamas for a moment. He shook his head. No, we don't have to wait for that. Are you sure? It's only a trip across the street. Don't worry about I'm it. I'm alright. Besides, Vaughn is going in pajamas too. Fair point. Cove then leaned in closer to you. He grumbled quietly. And your moms are going to figure out what happened anyway, so... Yeah... Come on! Away we go! With that decided, the four of you headed out across the street to your house. It felt strange waiting there while Mr. Holden knocked on the door. Hi there! Mom answered the door, and her expression brightened even more seeing Kyra there. She moved to pull Kyra into a hug when her gaze fell on you. Vaughn? Hi, Mom! Huh? How? When did you get out there? Why are you still in your pajamas? Mom's eyebrow raised as she gave you a deep examining stare. Meanwhile, you and Ko shared a slow side glance with each other. Before you could answer, more heads popped into view around the doorway. Ma, Liz, and Lee were all chuckling. To be honest, I always assumed Cove had been the one sneaking around. Her eyes sparkled with amusement and you had to look away. You noticed Cove's face was burning red again. It was a solid theory, Lani. Most likely they have both been breaking and entering. I wouldn't put it past my baby. He takes after his parents. Mm -hmm. You're right. I can't believe my Vaughn has been getting up to all that mischief too. Mortified, Cove looked like he wanted to disappear, while the adults chuckled and discussed what you and him may or may not have done. Fortunately, they left the conversation there. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, because I think that's starting to get a little too far. Starting to. Enough of standing around out there. Come in. Come on in. Mom moved aside to usher the group in and guided them to the living room. Before anyone could get settled in, Mom spoke up. You're allowed to- you're all welcome to stay for breakfast. We still have some great spices and stuff from the farmer's market. Of course. Woo! Yes, we'd be thrilled to host you. There were eager nods from Mr. Holden and Kyra, but Cove looked around the room filled with familiar faces before speaking up. Maybe, instead of staying here, why don't we go to the beach? Of course, Cove would ask that. Hmm. A scenic picnic, eh? A scenic, a scenic picnic, eh? Mr. Holden crossed his arms and contemplated that idea happily. Excited, Kyra clapped her hands together. Yeah! Oh, we could really make a day out of it. Might as well enjoy the ocean while we can. That sounds lovely, Cove. Everyone else put in their own agreement with Cove's suggestion. Before long, both families dispersed, getting everything ready. Sandwiches had to be made, water, sunscreen, towels, and more needed to be gathered and packed. Plus, you and Cove both took some time to get dressed for the day. An hour later, both you and your family and Coves were walking down the paddled path to the beach. The morning was already turning into a bright and beautiful day. You honestly couldn't ask for a better weather for a beach trip. The moment you laid your eyes on the full view of the ocean, you stopped and stood there mesmerized. It didn't matter that you grew up there. 
the sight always filled you with wonder. Hey Vaughn, hmm? So I was thinking about calling Terry and Miranda, see if they can come too. Everyone else is pretty much already here, so would your family mind? That'd be cool, I'll ask them. Get Derek magically here too. You were already so excited at the prospect of seeing your friends today that you immediately darted away in the direction of your mom. Your mom's went. Behind you, you could hear the familiar sound of Cove laughing. I have a question. Would it be alright if Terry and Miranda came by? I don't see why not. Ma looked to Mom to see what she thought, and she nodded in agreement. Mom then shot a glance over at Mr. Holden and Kyra, knowing that they had likely heard everything. You alright with that? Cliff, Kyra, what do you two think? The more the merrier. Okay. Of course, they're welcome with me. Thanks. Delighted, you nodded and turned on your heels. Cove was still several feet away talking to, talking to Lee and Liz, likely about the same topic. With a beaming smile, you gave him a thumbs up, and the two of them must have also approved as Cove quickly got his phone out and started making the calls. With that, you turned your attention to helping up with the picnic setup. Unexpectedly, your phone started ringing. You dug it out, curious to see the caller ID. Feeling your heart jump with excitement, you answered. <gasps> yes! 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 Hallelujah! It's Derek! Thank you! Thank you, Lord! Hey! It's been a while! Seriously, but what's up? The voice that came through was much deeper than it had been when you first met, but it still had the exact same amount of enthusiasm of a kid. Have you been enjoying these crazy summer days? Yeah, I have. It's been amazing. There's been ups and downs. It's been memorable, to say the least. I would have enjoyed them more if... I would have enjoyed them more if you'd been there. He sighed deeply to the phone. You frowned, trying to imagine how this summer would have gone if things were different with him. Sorry, but if it helps, I was thinking the exact same thing about you. This did sucks, huh? Yeah. But what about you? How's your summer been? You were beyond curious to know what Derek had been up to since the last time you spoke. He chuckled, noticing your invested tone. Why am I not seeing Derek's portrait? I got to see Shiloh's portrait. Why don't we get to see Derek's portrait? Don't tell me it's because they didn't bother making a Derek, like, sprite or, or a Derek art for step three. Don't tell me that's the reason, because that's a lame reason. Honestly, I've just been slammed with stuff already. College applications and scholarship inquiries. What else is new? I bet you're even more toned than the last time I saw you, you joked. Your only real struggle will be choosing which place to go. They'll both be desperate to have you. I wish you nothing but luck. Mm -hmm. I bet you're even more toned than the last time I saw you, you joked, laughing. You knew that you, need to, you didn't need to see him to know the answer to that. Derek wouldn't be Derek if his free time didn't revolve around sports. Totally. I'm going to be so buff, you won't even recognize me. What about your family? Are your brothers being good? My little brothers are little punks, but I guess they're doing alright. You both laughed at that. It was easy to imagine the grin on his face. Mom and Dad are fine. That's great. My moms are too. Turning your attention back to your surroundings, you smiled warmly at your family buzzing around. Towels were laid out and chairs and umbrellas were being set up. Actually, hmm? Tell him to come. Hmm, I'm, I'm out with my moms right now. Liz and Lee are here visiting too. Oh, that's fun. But if that's the deal, I'll let you get back to it. Are you sure? I don't mind. Uh-huh. I'm sure. I'm not about to lose your number. Okay. Bye. Bye, Vaughn. Have a heck of a day. It's so short. But it's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. <sighs> I miss Derek. I miss Derek. Hanging up, the conversation left you energized and in good spirits. It was exactly what you needed to make this day even better. Oh, of course. That? That's all I needed. That's all I needed was to talk to Derek. You heard, after talking to Shiloh, that's all I needed. You hurried over to your mom's and helped out, helped put the rest of the food out. In moments, you noticed Cove at your side. So what did they say? They're gonna come. Cool, thanks for calling them. No problem. No problem, I'm glad I thought of it. They'll meet us here later today. Shouldn't be too long. I can't wait. Once the setup was done, everyone got comfortable and dug into the food. You couldn't remember the last time breakfast tasted this good, but you attributed it to the gorgeous ocean view and soothing sea breeze. The conversation shifted to what you would all do next. In that case... We could do a few rounds of volleyball. There's plenty of us now. Is that all Could right? I play? Of course. Miranda brightened, delighted with this plan. Ma looked around to see if there were any other takers. Hmm. Hmm, I don't feel like playing. I'd, li I'd have to change, but it'd be fun to watch. I could be the ref. My eyes won't miss a thing. I'm in. Excellent. We almost have enough for two on two teams. 
volleyball is a good idea, but there should probably be something happening for those who aren't a fan. Ooh, I have some crafting supplies we could use to make jewelry. We could even use stuff we find around the beach to accentuate them. Really? What? Really? I want to make a necklace. Be I'd be interested in trying my hand at that too. Yeah, I'm less of a sports person and more of an arts and crafts person. I'll make some jewelry. Already you were imagining various designs you could make depending on what Lee let you use. Your cousin shot you a thumbs up, clearly happy with your decision. Kyra got up from the towel she was sitting on. She brushed some sand off her legs and then stretched her arms over her head. Candy. I'm up for a few rounds. Now that plan, now the plans were settled, the group temporarily split into two. Okay. Okay, let me pop back to the house and get my supplies. Is there something we should do? Hmm. hmm. Yes, you can start clearing out the towels for us to work at. And if you want, look around for good stuff to use. I'm on it. Roger that. While Lee ran back to the house, the group did just as, as she suggest suggested. By the time she returned, everyone had their craft area ready to work at. Lee sat down on one of the towels and looked up at everyone eagerly. She held up two necklace options. I hope you've all been thinking about what you want to make. I have everyone. I have for everyone a choice of either a chain or a threaded rope. How do I pick? All I know is I want to put some sea glass jumps on it. There's no rush. I'll leave the strands out here and you can decorate it however you want later. I think I'll keep it classic and only worry about finding a decent shell. Yeah! Yeah, I'm planning on doing shells too! I want to find some sea glass too. I'm gonna hunt for a handful of shells to pick from. I'm gonna look for some driftwood. I want to use some stones. I'll just wait and see. I don't have a plan. I want to find some sea glass too. Great minds think the same. We can look together. Happy with that suggestion? You nodded. After that, the little crafting club busily went to work on their pieces. Whatever they decided on using was attached in loops that were that were then slid onto their necklace base. Terry was immensely proud of herself when she was done. Hers was simple, but gorgeous because of the stinking piece of sea glass, stri a stinking piece, the striking piece of sea glass she painstakingly searched for and found. Mom decided on a medium-sized purple ring top shell as the centerpiece of hers, and Lee went with a few small simnia shells. Simnia, I'm gonna find out what those are. They both put their necklaces on soon after finishing them. After combing the beach several times, you found just what you were looking for. It took a bit, but you managed to make a necklace you were satisfied with. It mostly had sea glass. Your group of crafters would also cheer for the volleyball players whenever shouts could be heard coming from coming out of the court. On top of that, you all would hold up each newly made piece in the air and the players would take a breather to applaud the creation. You really enjoyed searching the beach, trading supplies, and watching everyone make their necklaces. The crafting club was definitely a success, and you weren't the only one that had a blast. The afternoon continued to drift by, but the fun was still going strong. Occasionally, someone would head back to the houses to use the bathroom, rest away from the sun a while, or retrieve something that they needed, but they always came back. The beach was never empty, and there was always a new conversation to take part in, or another game to join. This definitely sounds like super fun. At one point, Mr. Holden even broke out his pack of cards. He roped the whole group into a few rounds of good old Go Fish. There's only one thing that could bring this beach day to an end, and that was for the day itself to end. Before anyone realized it, the sun began to set over the sea. As that happened, you were taking a break, sitting on a towel with your legs stretched out past it and your feet buried in the warm sand. Shortly, you looked up to see your moms approaching. They stopped in front of you and smiled. Hey there, kiddo. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing really good. How about you? We're wonderful. They both sat down, squishing you between them. Ma leaned her head against yours, and Mom started rubbing your back soothingly. Nothing more was said at first, but Ma sighed contentedly. Mom looked at you wistfully. We're both really proud of you, Vaughn. True. Sneaking into, yeah, sneaking into Cove's bed like that last night. So proud. That's my boy. You grew up to be more than we ever could have hoped. Thank you. It's only thanks to you two. Your eyes started tearing up. I'm not sure I deserve any of that glowing praise. It's only thanks to you two. My ma wrapped an arm around your middle and squeezed you tightly in a side hug. Mom continued lightly scratching your back. Thank you. That means a lot, but I still think you're selling yourself short. You've always been a lovely person and I'm so thrilled to know you. Your voice faltered and you honestly couldn't imagine your life any other way. Ma lightly brushed some of your hair back and left a small kiss there. I'm so happy I got to have both of you as my moms. After that, all three of you were sitting there getting all sentimental. I don't know how we got so lucky with you and Liz. Ma reached out in front of you for Mom's hand. She gave it to her and Ma squeezed it. Of course. Mm. Vaughn has a point. We must have done something right. 
You stayed there quietly and contentedly, watching the sun set with your parents for a while. 